All right, let's move over to the 22 side of things. You uh, you ready to roll? Ready to roll. Ready to roll. On the 22 side, obviously a little fresher in our in our mind here. What are you thinking any of these guys are going to break out here or are we we giving up or kind of doing the same thing buy sell hold? You start start this one off. We got, you know, a, a decent list of wide receivers. We got Drake London, we got Garrett Wilson, uh, we got Chris Olave who have all been very solid. Drake London's value just definitely shirred up a little bit right everybody feels pretty oh, yeah. comfortable about him no, nobody's terribly worried Garrett Wilson uh maybe some people who if you didn't get what you wanted year after year uh, you know you start to oh I got to get rid of Garrett but i uh, for me still in the top uh still looks the optics of how he plays uh looks like he can be in the top uh percentile of wide receivers and same with Chris Olave really um yeah We've seen great runs from him. Then we get into some, you know, the if, ands, and maybes of the Jameson Williams, Jahan Dotson, and Traylon Burks. All three guys that I think all three have shown the ability to play in this game at one time, one way, shape, or another. Uh, would you agree? I agree, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so They've all had a little bit of flash. You know, they've all had a little right. bit of, uh, of, I don't know, dash. <laughs> and they've all had a little bit of falling flat on their face. So. Right. So is there is there any of those guys that you favor more than the other? I think consensus would be Jamison Williams would be mm-hmm. probably the overall favorite. I think our ADP would also suggest that. What what do you think about those those three guys and and how do you deal with um, first round wide receivers who haven't quite broken out for one reason or another? And I think there's some context for all three of those guys. Um, so. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think if I ranked them in order, I would rank them the way that you you the way that they're drafted. To be honest, um, so Jamison Williams, I his inability or uh, his availability was uh, was the biggest problem for him, in my opinion. You know, uh, obviously he had that. He, well, I think it was an ACL, ACL the yeah. end of his collegiate year, and so that struggled the first year. Then the second year, he had the the I believe it was the gambling and mm-hmm. and something and. But this last year, you just kind of saw, and the thing that um, I'm excited about with him is it seems like he's earned back the respect of the coaching staff, um, and you can kind of just see that he's he's progressed. You know, we talked about mm-hmm. on a different show, we talked about how I wasn't uh, in love with love, um, but if you watch game one to game 16 last year, you can see a major development in his in his in the way that he played. And it's the same thing I think with um, with Jameson. He just needed to be on the field, you know. He just needed to be yeah, out there reps. pushing pushing some effort, and and so yeah. For for me, he's he's definitely the the top ceiling guy. I think he he has the ability to be in that um, mid wide receiver one, you know. So wide receiver number six or seven overall, I think, which is pretty spicy. But I think he could do that on that offense. Uh, Dotson, I like the talent, but again, it's just you know, I, you know, they they should get a new quarterback in there, definitely get a better offensive coordinator. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, Eric, the enemy's now at the collegiate level, but I, I didn't like the way they were, they were used, but he wasn't right. You know, Dotson was, was never to me. He was never that uh, upper echelon guy. He was more of a steadfast, steady Eddie, right? Yeah. He was going to just, he's, you know, a, he's he, a two. He's a two. Yeah, exactly. He's a two. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I like what, the Jameson thought that's kind of my thought too. You, you saw at the end of the season, uh, you saw him sort of earning, doing the little things, playing football, uh, not just right. getting the head down. Hey, I'm not making every play. Hey, I'm not getting all the balls, but you saw him, you know, running down the field and blocking and, and springing plays and, and being a part of, of plays that he wasn't necessarily quote unquote, a part of. Uh, and I thought, I thought that was a, a big step in the right direction of, of Jamison Williams. We saw him do some great stuff, and we've seen him do some dumb stuff. You know, the back half of the season here, you you saw some games with uh, 47, 43, and 69 yards, seven targets, six targets, three targets. So it, as opposed to a lot of three target, one target, two target kind of games uh, throughout the, most of the season. He had a couple other games in there where uh, he saw some targets, but – for the yeah, most and he was part. 20, 20 to thirty percent on the field more too. Right, you know, as as the season progressed, his snap percentage went up, which was you know, 
and just as just as important as his production. So. Right, and he he is he is the cherry on top of that offense, right? So yeah. in a big way, if they can get him to do that, like because Detroit's not just going to give you know the culture that they've reset there isn't just going to give Jamison Williams um, more than one or two opportunities to run straight down the field a game if he's yeah. not doing the shit that he's supposed to be doing and isn't being a knucklehead. Right. Um, and I thought you saw that a little bit more. And but if if you can add the big dimension that everybody talks about with Jamison Williams, the, the field stretching ability. Uh, right. I think he does. He can do a lot more than that. Cause we've seen, we saw the end around in the playoff game against yep. the Niners just gone. Um, we, we've seen those things. Um, but if, if you, but that's the one thing I would say that probably the Detroit offense is missing is just that elite speed to really open up that um, the defense for them. And, and Jamison Williams can give you that. So if he can contribute that plus, give you all those little things, catch those screens, give you the end arounds. I think there's still a lot of untapped potential there. Jahan Dotson, I think is a really good too. If we can get a quarterback, I agree. I do not like the, I mean, Terry McLaurin struggled last year. Curtis Samuel was eaten uh, for a, for a minute there. Um, but yeah. you know, I think Jahan Dotson is, is good enough player. Um, I think he can be a, a solid number two in this league. So I'm not, and I, I'm, and again, then moving to Burks, I'm not necessarily out on him either. Um, the 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 traits are are too much fun. Uh, there he was looking decent in camp. Had some injuries coming in, um, and then just kind of seemed to limp through a good portion of the season. And then at the end, got healthy. Didn't really turn into much. Um, but it'll be interesting. I'm I'm more so interested in where the Titans are kind of heading. You know, yeah. Um, if yep. that offense can catch fire a little bit, and and Traylon can be a part of it. Then it then it's fun and Traylon's right now pretty pretty cheap pretty inexpensive. I keep finding myself thirteenth fourteenth round being able to if I want to take another shot on Traylon Burks. Um, so I feel like I would rather take the shot on Burks than Quentin Johnston. I don't know how you feel on those two, but that like there's probably just a lot of people who are just already out out on on sure. Burks, and I think there's already a lot of people who are out out on Quentin Johnston as well. Yeah. But I think if you drafted them, either one of them, you're you're going to be on the opposite. I didn't necessarily draft either one, but I'm just saying, like, right. if you draft, drafted Quentin Johnson last year, then you're like, yeah, fuck that guy. I'm, or excuse me, uh, screw that guy. I'm taking Burks, you know. And if you drafted Burks and you've struggled through the asthma and the and the the injuries and the and the challenges that he's had, you know, then you're like, oh, I'm I'm going to switch over to Quentin. But I, I did want to re, just clarify one point because I. I did say that Jamison Williams, I think, could be a wide receiver seven. I don't think that he could reach that in this current offense because of Laporta um, and St. Brown. Um, but I, I do think he has the talent that he could be that, like you were saying, that field stretcher, that 11-point uh, PPR guy off of one play type of type of player that yeah. I think that he could definitely rack up, rack up some points. But the way that the offense is structured, I don't necessarily think he – I don't think you'd get there with 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 St. Brown and Laporta and Gibbs in, in this offense right now, but you never know. Seasons seasons are odd. If he's on the field and other people are off the field for one reason or the other, th things can happen. But I, I did want to say that because I don't want people to think, oh, Jamison Williams is going to be a top ten wide receiver. Yeah. That's that's not necessarily what I'm gonna, what I was saying. I'm just saying talent wise, I think you could get there. So. Jamison clearly in our ADP reflects that uh, he he is the most trusted out of those guys, but still only eleven eleven oh three. Jahan Dotson's eleven ten, and then Jamison Williams and Quinton Johnston are actually back to back fourteen four and fourteen five uh, there. So I think that that's a possibility of a swip swap if you want to uh, get that done. At least that's what the ADP suggests. And now, like I said, the Quinton Johnston owner may say it's only been one year. I'll hold, and I've already seen this Trey Traylon Burks song and dance go, so I'm out. But um, I, I, that's kind of a coin flip to me. If since I have some Traylon, I might flip it for Quentin Johnston if that was if that's the question at at hand. Uh, but most of the time, I will say in those drafts, I'm looking for Burks and not looking for Johnston. So I think that tells me that I would prefer Burks, but maybe that's Jake Locke. Um, <laughs> But I, no, I, 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 the, the, the traits of both are tantalizing. The traits of Burks to me are really, really tantalizing. If you can get yeah. them unlocked for, for some of the things that he can do, I guess I still lean Trey, Traylon, you know, a little bit there. Definitely. So round two wide receivers, we got Christian Watson, 
uh, Wandell, Robinson, Pickens, and then we've got some. And then we got Pierce and Sky Moore. I, I think right. that um, right. I don't know. Mechie's in there and and Tyquan Thornton. Uh, but yep. you know, Mechie interesting potentially. You know, ha- had a had a un- unlucky roll of the dice there. So we shall see. And, and Thornton, you know, eh, whatever. Pierce Ooh. still jury out, but not really looking at his name. And Sky Moore, R.I.P. I think. Um, yeah, I think so. Doesn't seem like there's very much juice there. But I think Christian Watson, to me, is probably one of the most interesting wide receivers on this list. A- and George Pickens, I think. Mm-hmm. I think George Pickens probably straightened up a lot of people and got them a lot more interested at the end of last season, right? So I think there's yeah. less people who are at least willing to continually talk shit about George Pickens. But Watson's always had a little bit more of a built-in fan club. Yeah. And, you know, we've we've done plenty of drafts and plenty of talking. And for me, Christian Watson is, is you know, and George Pickens too, uh, but... Um, at least from Pickens, I've and, I, and you've seen it from Christian Watson. And Pickens, I guess, has a little bit more of a question mark of of who's throwing in the ball and how can they get it done. But uh, Mason Rudolph got it done with Pickens, and it was looked awesome. And then we've seen it with mm-hmm. Christian Watson. Uh, but now the Packers are completely different uh, from from that rookie year. Uh, he had a couple of decent games in there, but missed some time. So. He's kind of like a lottery ticket, right? You know, there's there's the hamstring thing we got to get right, right? We can't be we can't be missing all these chunks of time. Um, right. And then there's there's those weeks in you know twelve and thirteen that you saw from him where uh, in this in this last season where he's seven for five, ninety four yards, nine targets, seven receptions, seventy one yards, two touchdowns. Um, those are the kind of performances that he can that Christian Watson can give you, but. Can he can he stay on the field? Which is not something that I typically really hold against you too too much. But when it's been a hamstring and it's been some big chunks, you you start to get a little a little concerned. But you hope they figure it out. Uh, but then you also have you know so much target competition over there um, yeah. with Green Bay that I I think I, I'll take I'll take the Wicks and the Dubs and. I'll leave the Watson and the and the Jaden Reed maybe for other people just because those are the cheapest parts of those offenses that I can right. uh, grab. Now maybe that uh, doesn't make much sense. I think and it's no, it's not a slight on Jaden Reed and it's not a slight on Christian Watson. Just the other guys are cheaper, and I feel like there's just a lot of parts on there that um, you know can can week to week be a bit of a nail biter. It seems like Jaden Reed at least will be in the business of potentially having some kind of more manufactured touches mm-hmm. um, and, and was able to play through some injuries and stay on the field. So what do you think about uh, Watson? I've traded every piece that I've had of Watson. I think he just may be the type of player that I'm just not into. Like, And it's not just the injury. It's just kind of the streakiness of the way that he, the right. way that he, and I think performs. that's kind of what I meant with the lottery ticket. He could, yeah. he, he could explode and being in every, yeah. like he certainly has this, the build, the talent, the the tools to be that every week player who does those blow has those blow up games all season long. Yeah. Or is it just every once in a while and he's not in your lineup when he does? Yeah, I mean he kind of has that Will Fuller like um Sammy Watkins kind of feel to me where he's gonna have a game or two where it's just like heck yeah, and then he's gonna have a handful, if not two handfuls of game where it's like he's either not on the field or he's just out of the out of the playbook. I um and so, so for me, I, I tend to just, I don't draft them when we do um, our startups or our startup in startups. I don't draft them in mocks. I don't draft them unless, you know, his value drops considerably. I think Pickens for me is probably the all-star caliber YouTube, 2 million view catches that Pickens does mm-hmm. is also probably part of this is like, I just love to watch that dude play sometimes. Cause he's, you know, he, he just makes some unbelievable catches and moves and, and, and that, and, you know, whether it's Russ or Fields, um, I, I think that Arthur Smith can. He wasn't the greatest uh, in Atlanta, to say the least. Mm-hmm. But it, but I don't think he's a horrible offensive coordinator. I don't know if he's a great head coach. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. He's not a great head coach, <laughs> but I don't think he's a horrible offensive coordinator. So I think this year will be interesting. But I think I would rather. I definitely would rather have. 
I would I, I would trade Christian Watson in a second to get Pickens. Not yeah. in a second and a second to get Pickens. No. Um, that's probably way more expensive than I have to, but that's kind of my feeling. That's how out I am on Christian Watson. So, yeah, uh, you know, we right now FFD ADP we got Pickens at seven three, we got Watson at eight seven, so around and a couple picks uh, okay. separating those two. So maybe in the ballpark, um, you know, there's certainly a, a time where Watson was ahead or they were very close. Now it's a little, little gap widening from the way I think Pickens finished last season. Well, and Deontay Johnson out of town helps uh, the, helps the value there. So. Sure. Uh, and they'll, yeah. they'll most certainly add a rookie or two. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, exactly. Well, we already know that, that Arthur Smith doesn't need a whole lot of wide receiver. He, he, just give him two. He's fine with two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but he play. He play. He has the offense like I play chess. I only play with like three pieces. Yeah. I lose. I lose every time, but I only <laughs> yeah. play with three pieces. You know? We, um, me and Big Co in one of the Patreon leagues, um, on a team that's ready to win. That's a much bigger trade, which I don't want to really. win a bunch of pieces, but uh, essentially, I think it's a it's it's a good point, and, I, and it's probably not going to be that great for us because I think you and I are probably on the same page, and you just said that you're out on Christian Watson, but. You know, we, we discussed a lot of do we want to get rid of Christian Kirk because it's a very deep starting lineup. It's a very deep roster or sorry. Do we want to get rid of uh, Christian Watson? Oh, okay, um, okay. it's back. a very deep league. It's a very deep starting roster. There's nobody on the waiver wire. It's, you know, yada, yada, yada. But we have a pretty good team and we're ready to go now. We got Christian McCaffrey, um, which, you know, put us we bought him last year, which put us in a position we didn't expect to be in. And we were oh, putting yeah. up points this past year, just got hurt. Uh, so we're kind of ready to ready to go. And, you know, we kind of came in and, and there's much there's four or five parts to the deal. But one of the building blocks of the deal was Christian Watson's one of our one of the players that, that can still gain or some garner some value to somebody who is maybe going in the opposite direction of a little bit more of a rebuild and has appealed to grow in value. Whereas somebody like a Christian Kirk was somebody who, you know, yeah. seems to have n nobody cares about Christian Kirk has plateaued in value. And, and I don't think he'll really, you know, even if he comes out and puts together a full season of what he was starting to do last year uh, and yeah. really the year before still probably won't gain too much love and respect, but a damn good yeah. starter in your, as your wide receiver three or your flex mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. week in week out uh, for, for Christian Kirk. So we ended up again, a piece to a bigger deal, but it see like one of our main things was how do we get Christian Kirk? And it felt like uh, Watson was, was Christian Watson was a, a nice way to be able to facilitate a deal to get Christian Kirk involved. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. Anytime you bring it in Kirk, I, you know, I'm all ears. I, I thought for a minute you were giving away Kirk. That's why I almost left the podcast, but I'm back. <laughs> we were, you know, I, I didn't quit the band. I'm back. Uh, yeah. Nice so would you, would out, you rather but... have Kirk or, or Watson? I would rather have Kirk. Yeah, how about, just Holly, how about Hollywood or or what Hollywood? Yeah, same. Well, that doesn't, doesn't make it very funny because I knew we were both going to be both on those guys. Yeah, Christian um, Watson's one of those players where last year I traded him and um, and a piece for Drake London, right? Like, so if somebody's down on Alave right now, somebody's down on on you know maybe I don't. I think Watson's last last year off season was higher obviously than this year's off season. So it would take a little bit more, but he's one of those pieces that I think is a very good, um, I'm not talking well, he, he's one of those pieces that I think is a very positive stone stepper to get to somewhere else. Right? right. Like I think he has value, like you said, on like if I'm rebuilding and he's part of a deal that I can bring in, like he's a, you know, I talked about um, a few, few podcasts ago, we talked about the cilantro or the, you know, the orange wedge on a plate, you know, when you go out to a restaurant, you get the, the, the fancy toppings. If he's like the green onion, the scallions on a, on a, on a salad or something that, that I get to throw on top of a, of a bigger deal, then yeah, I definitely am not, I'm not out on Watson. I'm just not trading for him. And, um, and unless he's, he's added in as like the fortune cookie, I'm not necessarily going to get him in most of my deals. So, yeah, um, I think, I think that's a good way to put it. Cause I, <clears throat> I can bring jog to memory of, I, I picked up an orphan in one of the FFD leagues last year. I had Isaiah Pacheco uh, in there, and that was a piece that I could get rid of um, and, and to try to help me. But I couldn't, I, you know, it's hard to get a first for Pacheco. I was trying to add some stuff and get a first, and I really couldn't. 
and yeah. we got into the playoffs and we can still trade in the playoffs. Um, and, and somebody ha- finally had, had some interest in Pacheco, uh, cause they, you know, needed him at that, at that point in time. And, and I said, well, you know, I, I was trying, I, I might've ended up getting another little small pick on top of it. Um, but I ended up trading Pacheco for Christian Watson on the rebuild. And, sure. you know, in general, did I lose potentially a little vo- uh, value for, for Pacheco in that trade? Maybe. And as the ADP would suggest that um, Pacheco 7-9, um, Watson 8-7. So, yeah. you know, I, I, yes, but I think to your point and to kind of what me and Big Co were thinking that, like, I got a much better chance of Christian Watson coming out, getting on a three-game heater, and somebody going, yeah, I'll give you a first round pick for a you know random twenty five first round pick or whatever. Then I do for at any point of Isaiah, even if Isaiah Pacheco's on a heater, it's gonna be hard for me. So, just a a piece a, a bridge to to something else uh, would be why I kind of made that deal for for Christian Watson because I do think there's gonna be some times where he's bringing sexy back um, and yeah. and very much Bring- has a has a spike in value, but. Will it be sustained? And will, you know, it's going to be one of those trades where you, you know, you're you're trading him away and and thinking that he's not really this guy. He's probably going to be, you know, not quite this all the time. And hopefully, he didn't right. lose too much there. So I, I yeah, I, he's definitely the bridge to Terabithia. Yep, <laughs> I, I agree with that. So. I think I think we're kind of both on the same page there. Now, one more on on Watson. Would you re-roll? Back to, you know, when we were, when Watson was coming out, he was debated end of first, early second. If you could re-roll into an early second for this draft class with Watson, would you do that? Yeah. Yeah, I think I definitely would. I think, um, I'm, I think I'm right there with you. Yeah, I think just especially the way that this draft class is setting up, I think there's going to be some yummy, yummy value there at, at the <laughs> end of the first, uh, beginning of the second that, that you know, um that's going to be value right off the rip, but I also think it's going to have the potential to, to increase during the season. And so I definitely wouldn't mind the re-roll, the re-rack. Um, if I had like, you know, a late, late first, I might even try to see if I can send Christian Watson in the late first to get into that mid first range. I don't know how far I could get up the ladder, right? Use but that might be escalator. kind of fun. Just, oh, yeah, yeah, just to use, use him as the bridge to Terabithia. Mm-hmm. Um, use him as the bridge to get up into five six you know i don't know seven uh, yeah. most likely uh, but but still like you know some somewhere up there that might be a that might be the play too but uh, yeah either one of those i'd be willing to do 